An update, though, on the U.S. Senate race in Arizona. Democratic Representative Ruben Gallego has defeated Republican Carrie Lake and will become Arizona's next senator. The Arizona Senate race called just hours ago by Decision Desk HQ. He's leading with 50% of the vote, and his opponent, Republican Carrie Lake, has 48% of the vote, with 89% reporting. I want to give a couple updates on the election because we we obviously know that Donald Trump won every swing state and he dominated, which you can see here. He got 312, I mean, uh, yeah, 312 uh, of delegates. But then you go down here and you look at the Senate. Now, I heard earlier that they've called Arizona for Ruben Gallego. This is what I've heard. Now, Republicans have already swept. We now control the Senate. But there, this is an interesting thing here in Arizona with Ruben Gallego. It is a week after the election day there, and we still haven't counted the doggone votes yet. At this point, we're 92%. There's still 300,000 votes that are outstanding from what I hear, and it does not look like that Carrie Lake can overcome this margin. If you look at the numbers right here, some of you guys can't see it. He's at 50%. She's at 47%. This third party, Green Party candidate screwed her. Because I would argue that most of these people probably would have voted for her instead of Gallego. But right now, she's down about 70,000 points or 70,000 votes. With what's left on the table, I don't know if she can overcome that. Now, a lot of people are going to go online and tell you, oh, it's because of fraud and all this. No, nah, nah, stop it. I think we have to do a better job at putting up a better candidate. Why do you say that, Mr. Tatum? Because David Schweiker didn't have a problem winning. Donald Trump didn't have a problem winning. Uh, Juan is not going to have a problem winning. He's up 49% with 83% of the vote. I think he's going to take this, this victory. I don't think any of these other people have a, have a problem winning. They're not having a problem winning here. They, they're, they're not struggling here in California. They, they got a healthy lead all the way through. Earlier, they called Gabe... Evans, they haven't called him on here, but earlier they called Gabe Evans in Colorado that he flipped that seat. So could there be nefarious things that are happening? Potentially. I do not think that's the case in this election. I think that Kerry Lake is not as strong of a candidate as Donald Trump. Donald Trump won 52% of the vote in Arizona. Kerry Lake is down to 47% of the vote. You see David Schweiker won, what, what did he win? 52% of the vote. When it's all said and done, this gentleman may win 50 to 52% of the vote. When you start to look at it, you say the, 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 the voting is consistent. The Republicans that they like in the state of Arizona are consistently winning. And Carrie Lake just so happened to be struggling. And you cannot say that, oh, it's because of nefarious things only when it applies to her. Martha McSally lost to both, both Senate seats. She was appointed after McCain passed. Then she lost the seat. Then she ran against, uh, um, what's his name? Mark Kelly lost the seat. Carrie Lake ran for governor, did not win. And now she's running for a Senate seat, and, and it doesn't look like she's going to win. So at the end of the day, you have to, and I hope that she win. I hope she pull it out. They, they, some people haven't called it yet. But at the end of the day, you got to look at the candidate and say, are we putting out the best candidate? Because we put up Donald Trump and he won. We put up David Schweiker, he won. For the seventh time. You put up uh, uh, other people that have won in the House legislator. They've won. We have to consider the candidate and say, is this the best candidate? And do Arizonans want this candidate to be their candidate? Somebody asked a question in the comment section. Let me go back. Put me on full screen. Somebody asked a question in the comment section about why Carrie Lake isn't a good candidate. Let me just go back on this real quick uh, to, to address this, and then we're going to go to some more stuff. Carrie Lake, in my opinion, lost momentum because I supported Carrie. I rallied with Carrie. I voted for Carrie then. I voted for Carrie now. But I'm a realist because we have to be realistic about the perspective of what we're looking at so we don't continue to make mistakes and end up getting our heads whooped every single election. Carrie Lake started out hot, but she began to offend McCain Republicans in Arizona. And if you offend the McCain Republicans in Arizona, 
They will not vote for you. And then Arizona is weird when it comes to women's reproductive care and all this other stuff. So Donald Trump's vision of America as a whole enticed people. Um, Carrie Lake's vision of America turned off some people in Arizona because they wanted Prop 139 to pass. Carrie Lake came out with her haphazard response to the, the life of the unborn because she was trying to be something she's not. That's the thing. I think that's what hurt Carrie. People liked Carrie Lake because she was, when she first came out, she was bold, she was courageous, and then it started leaning more towards she's trying to be like Donald Trump. We don't have any McCain Republicans in here, do we? <laughs> All right, if you want, get the hell out. It was the party of McCain. And it was the, I know. It was bad. Boy, Arizona has delivered some losers, haven't they? And in Arizona, people don't like that. Especially not local politics, federal representation. Now, building the economy and keeping us safe across the country, but then when you go to local government, people are looking at Carrie like, eh. And then not only was it that, was the momentum is lost. Donald Trump is the only person that can run, lose, run again, win. In the eyes of the people. We know he won three times, if you ask me. He's the only person in the world that can do that. Nobody else can do that. So when she ran and lost, and she's trying to run again, she lost a lot of momentum. Nobody's talking about Carrie Lake anymore. Nobody was talking about Carrie Lake anymore. Mitch McConnell didn't give no money to Carrie Lake, from what I'm hearing. He didn't endorse her financially. So if we go and look at it, I bet you Ruben Gallegos outspent Carrie Lake by three, four times. That's what happened to Arizona last time. Mark Kelly raised $75 million and. What's his name that ran against Mark Kelly? Raised $9 million. Herschel Walker in Georgia raised $35 million. Warnock raised $75 million. Back in the midterms in, in Nevada, the governor won, a Republican. The senator lost, got outspent by tens of millions of dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting outspent. Their, their propaganda campaign is working. Carrie Lake's momentum dropped. She gave a weird response to the life of the unborn. And therefore, people are not interested in her as much. And then she secretly recorded Jeff DeWitt. Yeah, Sean, Emma, this explosive uh, recorded audio has gone viral basically since it was released, and rightfully so. Uh, now Arizona Senate candidate Carrie Lake and many others are calling for the state's GOP chair, Jeff DeWitt, to resign. Now, speaking to a reporter from NBC in New Hampshire last night at former President Trump's victory party, Lake said, quote, he's got to resign. We can't have somebody who is corrupt and compromised running the Republican Party. The recording, which was first reported to the Daily Mail, purports to capture DeWitt offering Lake money in exchange for her staying out of politics for two, two years. Now, here is part of that 10-minute conversation, which reads uh, DeWitt saying, first of all, so the ask I got today from back east is, where is, is there any companies out there or something that could just put her on the payroll to keep her out? Carrie Lake responded saying, this is about defeating Trump and I think that's a bad, bad thing for our country. DeWitt then says, just say, is there a number at which she then cuts him off and says, I can be bought? That's what this is about? DeWitt replies, you can take a pause for a couple of years. You can go back, right back to where you are going after that. Lake then rebutted this many times, saying it's, uh, she will not accept billions of dollars even to stay out. She then says, this is not about the money, it's about our country. Which, he, he sounded horrible on the secret recording. But... When I go back and think about it, he was, I think he was right. He told Carrie, sit this one out. We'll give you a cush job over here. We'll make sure you take care of, sit this one out because you're not going to win, like, you're not going to win the election. You, you, it's, you're going to struggle to win. And what happened? Everybody else won by a good, good margin. At least 52% or 50 or 52%. She's the only one that's below 50. She's at 47% right now. And 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 I want y'all, I want I want conservatives to stop jumping to the cheating train.
because we look like we look foolish when we say that. If 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 all the Republicans were taking L's except Trump, then I'd say, okay, they're trying to go for the Senate. They're trying to go for all the Republicans were winning. We took over the House in this election. Republicans were flipping seats. It, was, it wasn't a barely win. We flipped the whole Senate. We, we're probably going to flip the House of Representatives. It's at least eight Republicans that are leading right now. Even if like one of them don't win, we, st- we still got enough to flip the House. So unless they just randomly pick Kerry, we got to stop being silly. I think Kerry, and it's not her, is that we have to find Republican candidates that can run a clean, good campaign that Arizonans believe in. And I'm not saying it's a woman thing. I don't know because I, I just think Republican women, for some, I don't know what it is because McCain won by a landslide. Doug Ducey, who's the governor here, won by 300,000 votes. It seemed like the two women that we put up for the Senate seat and governor seat have lost. I don't know if it's the Arizona want to see a man run. Uh, do they respect a man or just the two women we use? And I could say more. I could say Carrie Lake, I think, is a better candidate than Martha McSally was. Martha McSally was a terrible candidate. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I went to Martha McSally's website when she was running against Kirsten Cinema. I said, let me see how, let me look at these websites and see what people are seeing. Martha McSally didn't even have her issues on her website. She didn't have any issues on her website. She's just an Air Force veteran. That's why she, that's why she took that L dog. 